Tech titan Bill Gates himself admits that the quick development of AI apps such as ChatGPT took him by surprise. In an edition of his Unconfuse Me podcast with Khan Academy CEO Sal Khan on Thursday, Gates talked about the most stunning demo I've ever seen in my life, a demonstration of ChatGPT's capabilities on an AP biology exam in August 2022. The incident started in June of last year when Microsoft partner OpenAI's AI-powered chatbot was evaluated by Gates, who was not impressed. Yes, it's kind of an idiot savant, I thought to myself at the time, Gates replied. I don't think it's practical. Bring ChatGPT back to him once it can demonstrate advanced human-level capability by earning the highest possible score on the AP biology exam. This was what he perceived to be rather challenging challenge directed at OpenAI CEO Sam Altman. Gates quipped on the program, I thought, well, that'll give me three years to work on HIV and malaria. When the creators of OpenAI returned two months later, Gates saw ChatGPT receive the highest possible score of five on the exam. According to Gates, the software has advanced from being unable to read or write, in the sense humans do, to being almost human in both abilities. According to Gates, I'm still in a state of shock at, wow, it is so good. Despite the fact that even the most sophisticated AI models are capable of making serious errors or completely fabricating information, Gates noted that ChatGPT's success is accompanied by many footnotes about hallucinations and things like that. Gates was nevertheless quite pleased by the technology's quick development and enthusiastic about its possible uses, saying, let's see where we can put it to good use. An optimistic on this front, Gates has projected that as early as next year, AI chatbots such as ChatGPT or Google's Bard might begin assisting children in learning to read and write. Khan concurred, stating that his business is creating Conmigo, an experimental chatbot trainer, just for that. According to Khan, Conmigo is already able to act like a fairly good human tutor. There are times when it seems like it would pass the Turing test and a decent person is on the other end of the chat. Of course, flashes of genius don't always translate into production that is consistently on par with human ability. According to Khan and Gates, AI tutors are unlikely to replace instructors anytime soon. Rather, they might make teachers' jobs easier and give underprivileged students in low-income parts of the United States and abroad access to less expensive tutoring options. With regard to OpenAI's most recent large language model, GPT-4, which was released last summer, Khan stated, it makes mistakes, to be clear. However, he continued saying that the model is dramatically better than earlier versions and that OpenAI has demonstrated that it can outperform 90% of human test takers on the SAT. Tova Klein, a child psychologist at Barnard College, cautioned CNBC Make It last month about those errors. She stated that children shouldn't grow up depending solely on AI tools for information and that AI models should improve in terms of elucidating how they arrive at particular conclusions. I think there is a role for AI if the science shows that that kind of learning, in addition to a teacher, is useful, Klein stated. I believe that a portion of the issue is that we don't really know yet. Nevertheless, Gates believes he has seen enough of ChatGPT's advancements, especially its increasing capacity, to articulate its logic to declare that within the next 10 years, the technology will fundamentally alter education. These new tools can both close the gap and raise the overall level of achievement if we think about the next 10 years in terms of both the absolute level of learning and the gap with lower income minority students, stated Gates. In an interview with Sam Altman, Bill Gates said, have the luxury of witnessing your work in progress. I was highly dubious. I had no idea ChatGPT would become so excellent. We genuinely don't grasp the encoding, which amazes me. The idea of where Shakespearean is encoded is unknown, but we can watch it multiply and know the numbers. Do you think the representation will become clear to us? It is quite difficult to try to do this in a human brain. You may argue that the issue is comparable because linked neurons are involved. We can precisely x-ray this, but the connections are changing and we won't cut into your brain to see how they change. Sam Altman said, I'm very confident that we'll comprehend it in the next five years. With such insight, we could achieve significantly better training efficiency and precision than we are able to do at the moment. This is evident in many instances in the history of technology when an empirical finding is made. They are clueless about the process, yet it is obviously effective. 
then they can improve it to an even greater degree as scientific understanding grows. Yes, sometimes it's just playing about with physics and biology, and you're like, whoa, how does this actually come together? In their situation, the person who constructed GPT-1 sort of solved this on his own, which was impressive in a way, but he had no fundamental grasp of how or why it worked. The scaling laws followed, how much better it was going to be was predictable. For this reason, they were very certain it would work when we told you we could conduct the demo. Although we hadn't trained the model, we felt reasonably certain. This has prompted several attempts and an ever-deepening scientific understanding of the situation. However, the actual source of it was empirical data. What important turning points should we anticipate occurring throughout the next two years? Without a doubt, multimodality will be crucial, i.e. speech in or speech out. Speech coming in, speech going out. Evidently, a lot of people desire it. ChatGPT released audio and picture content, and the response was far more than anticipated. They'll be able to go much farther with that, but perhaps the most significant advancements will concern thinking skills. As things are, GPT-4's reasoning capabilities are severely constrained, additionally, dependability. The increase in reliability will be crucial since, if you ask the GPT-4 most questions 10,000 times, one of those 10,000 answers is definitely fairly good. However, it doesn't always know which 10,000 responses are the best, so you'd like to always receive the greatest answer. Personalization and customization will also be crucial. Individuals come to GPT-4 with extremely diverse expectations, styles, and presumptions. They'll enable all of that, along with the option to use your personal data. The capability of being able to access your email, calendar, schedule appointments, connect to other external data sources, and know everything about you. These are going to be some of the most crucial sectors for development. Right now, the basic algorithm simply multiplies and feeds backwards to create new words effectively repeating itself. If you ever reach a point where you have to apply transformations an arbitrary number of times, say in solving a complex arithmetic equation, the control logic for the reasoning needs to be far more complex than what they do now. It appears that they require adaptive computation at the very least. At the moment, they use the same amount of compute on each token, a simple one or solving a challenging mathematical problem. Certainly, when we ask, examine the Riemann hypothesis, that's worth processing power. Saying the has the same meaning as this. Okay, so we need to make that work at the very least. We might require far more advanced items than that. The CEO of OpenAI cited the International Atomic Energy Agency, which oversees nuclear weapons, as a possible model and speculated that model inspections could be similar to how IAEA weapons systems inspections are conducted. In addition, Gates and Altman exchanged letters about their favorite music and programs. According to Altman, Slack is his most used app. I wish I could say ChatGPT, he continued to say. Outlook is the app that Gates claims to use the most. I'm this old-style email guy, either that or the browser, because, of course, a lot of my news is coming through the browser. Altman remarked, I didn't quite count the browser as an app. Even if I might utilize it more, I would still wager on Slack. All day long, I use Slack. That's it, guys. We hope you guys are also as surprised as Bill Gates is. Do let us know your thoughts and subscribe to our channel for more information.